uh, DD Solar here. This is a quick update on the solar workshop. I've added some more solar panels and uh, I can't stop putting solar panels in the window so there's a shot of them. I also added uh, these solar panels and these are 100 watt solar panels. They're on the side of the building. I just installed them and I'm going to do a little tweaking but uh, they're pretty much permanently installed. To install them I use various fasteners and hardware I had laying around in addition to some self-drilling metal screws that I bought on eBay. Here's a shot of what the mounting solution looks like before any solar panels are placed on it. It's simply a piece of 2x4 lumber which is recycled from the shed I tore down. I use 3 inch self-drilling metal screws. I place a single washer underneath. I'm using the existing fastener holes in the building. I did not make any additional fastener holes through the siding or in the building. Behind the 2x4s is a layer of neoprene rubber. You can see the neoprene rubber. It's that black strip which you can see just behind the 2x4 up against the siding. Tightening down on the screw compresses the neoprene rubber against the side of the building. It creates a buffer and a nice way to mount the 2x4 to the siding and hopefully reduce any damage to the siding. It also adds a slight flexibility, a little bit of give, in case there's any thermal expansion or contraction. I added this plastic bulkhead fitting and there's a rubber gasket right behind it and uh, this helps protect the solar panel wires from being sliced apart by the sharp metal that makes up the sheathing on the building and there needs to be something to protect the wires uh, they could move around and uh, they could get cut over time and of course it's a safety problem as well the metal building uh, sheathing is conductive so if it did cut in it would create a short circuit so hopefully this will protect my wires it also looks more professional. Eventually this bulkhead will be protected from rain and there will also be some sort of conduit. That stuff is coming but right now I just have the bulkhead and the wires running straight through. These are wires I added recently for the 100 watt solar panels which are right there. These wires are older. Two are going to the 1200 watt solar panels that I recently added that I built a frame for. And then the other two go to the two 100 watt solar panels that are pretty old and those are also on a frame. I have room to add more wires if I want to but eventually I'm going to add a second bulkhead fitting right in this area here. And there's the older 100 watt solar panels I'm talking about. And those are going to be probably moved eventually but they're powering my workshop right now. Over here is another solar panel that's been powering a security light for quite a long time. There's the 1200 watt solar panel array I was referring to. I added these very recently and I built a frame for them. Here's the construction progress on the other side of the wall so far. The bulkhead fitting has been installed in the metal siding. I have cut out the green foam board insulation so I can get access to that area. And these are the large PV conductors that come in from the 1200 watt solar array as well as the smaller 200 watt solar array. And I'm doing some cable management. I'm not done. This is all work in progress. And the cables come out here and they go into these wire clips. Let me go ahead and pan up and show you that. So there's the cable clips. I'm not done. I'm still working with the wires, but it's a lot neater. And you can see that they kind of hold everything and keep the cables from moving around. I'm going to work on the arrangement a little bit more, get it to look a little bit better. And it goes all the way up there. They go into the circuit breakers, which this whole thing is under construction, but it's starting to look better. And here is an update on the solar power equipment board. You can see I've done some additional work on the wiring. It's still under construction. There's a new voltmeter added in the upper left-hand corner of the voltmeter area. That's uh, right there. And it's currently reading 55 volts. That's the 1200 watt solar panel array, which is feeding the grid tie right there. On the right, you can see a orange voltmeter and the orange voltmeter is showing the voltage of the solar panel array, the two 100 watt solar panels. The inverter on the left here has had its fans modified. I could no longer stand the uh, fan control algorithm in that inverter so I opened it up and I cut out all the wires feeding the fans and I took over the fans myself. So there are now five fans on this inverter using two separate redundant power systems, one of which is solar powered. 
and I may make more videos on that later. But currently, uh, that's how the inverter is running. The inverter fans turn on, they stay on, they don't turn on and off, they don't make annoying sounds, they don't blip and rev every time a cloud comes over, and there's no glitches or weird behavior, so that's very good. Here are the wires to the solar panel I just added. This is uh, the solar panel that's on the left of the two that are mounted on the wall of the solar workshop. I have not yet connected it to anything. The right hand solar panel, which is mounted on the wall, is connected to that green voltmeter and I've been using that for various purposes. I also made a video about making tea using that very solar panel and you can check that video out separately. Next update is I took this power board out of my solar shed and this power board was used among other things for charging my lithium iron phosphate powered lawnmower. If you've seen my other video about this, you'll recognize this board and this charge controller. This is the MPT7210A boost charge controller, and I've been using that to charge my mower with some success. This board will now live in the solar workshop. It's installed right next to my lawnmower where it parks, and I'll be using it to charge my lawnmower. I have not yet powered it up. This circuit breaker here has no wires attached to it. I just now installed the board and I haven't run the wires to it yet. Down here is uh, my other charger. This is the speed charger that came with the mower. In case I wanted to use that, it's mounted right here as well. This charger is very powerful, and if I need to really fill up the mower with power really quick, this is the best way to do it. And there's the lawnmower. You can see that it's parked right next to the power board and the charging area. So this will allow me to drive right in and plug in the charger when I'm done mowing. I did not record it, but I had to do some uh, electrical work on this mower earlier today and the voltmeter that I had installed was not giving me proper readings and it's been this way since last season. It's very hard to tell what the mower is doing, what the battery status is. The voltage would just float all over the place and it would go up and down and it was very random and becoming pretty much worthless. Here's a closer look at the voltmeter in question. So that's the voltmeter right there. It's actually one of those uh, lithium ion battery gauges slash voltmeters. It does the job, and it was starting to read really randomly, and it was not accurate. It was causing me a lot of trouble. But now the readings are stable. And when I turn on the voltmeter, it reads accurately. It doesn't jump all over the place anymore. It was a lot of work, but lesson learned, if you have a bad switch, it can cause a lot of problems. The green cable, which is hanging there, it's been hanging there since last year. That's a new charge cable that I purchased for this mower. I haven't installed it yet but uh, I did pick the green color on purpose. Maybe I'll make a video about that or something. So eventually that cable is gonna be used to connect the mower to the Boost Solar Charge Controller. The current cable is rather thin. That's a much thicker cable, so it should be uh, helpful in charging the battery. I haven't done very much video on this mower. I have some upgrades and plans I want to do for this mower, and hopefully I'll be able to make videos. Currently it has a 16 cell lithium iron phosphate battery in it, and I would like to add more capacity, certainly. Maybe some kind of uh, better gauging or instrument to measure the battery. Something better than a voltmeter. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll make some videos about it. One last quick update. This is a Make Sky Blue solar charge controller. Currently it's running my security lighting. And it's charging the battery during the day from a 100 watt solar panel. And then at night the floodlight comes on outside the building. This charge controller has a real difficult time sensing night and day when used with a single 12 volt panel. So I would not recommend this charge controller to be used with a single 12 volt solar panel with an open circuit of 18 to 20 volts. For some reason it demands over 18 volts before it will sense that it's daytime. That's really annoying. However, beyond that glitch, it's working pretty good. It's doing what I want. I may replace it with something else later. But as for right now, I'm just going to leave it running. It handles my lighting and uh, should be good enough for now. Here is the Floron solar generator. I previously made a video about this solar generator in which I removed and disabled the vacuum fluorescent display. The controller had failed and was lighting up all the segments, which means it got pretty hot or warm and it was wasting power. It was basically like a, a big heater on the front of the display. So in that video I disabled it and I replaced it with a digital voltmeter, which you can see right here. So far, this solar generator has been successful in powering my workshop. 
And I'm going to just keep it right here on the workbench slash battery shelf and uh, keep it working and get my money's worth out of it. Here is a miniature portable power system. It's this thing right here. It's functioning like a solar generator. There's a small solar panel feeding it. I upgraded it with a LiPo battery to increase the storage capacity. Right now all I use it for is lighting. There's a miniature USB lamp that I bought to run off of it. It doesn't light the entire room but it does produce a noticeable amount of light. Okay that's about it for this solar workshop update. I don't want it to get too long. In the coming weeks I expect to have several new projects and videos uploaded. In the meantime, this video is just a quick update to show you the status of the solar workshop and different things I've been working on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.